Tom and welcome back to the channel. Alright guys, tomorrow I will be uploading video of the interview with Gil Broussard. Um, so I got it locked down. I will be talking to him tomorrow. Um, we will be talking about Planet X and the Electric Universe and how that relates to Bible prophecy. I think you'll be very interested in that um, that video. I'm going to put a couple of links down at the bottom in the description box of a couple of videos that I would recommend as a prerequisite to that study because we're going to be talking about some things that you're, you may be like, what? What are they talking about? What does all this mean? Why are we talking about this? Well, we know who controls the universe. And he does things in that realm. Now, the thing is, there's a was a debate going on last year, 18 months ago when, and by the way, I said two and a half years for Siding Spring. I got to correct myself. It was 18 months. I don't know why I said two and a half years. But 18 months ago, Siding Spring came in close approach with Mars. And there's a huge amount of data and information that needed to be absorbed. And at the time, I was preoccupied with things going on in my life. And so I missed a lot of what you was trying to show me. Now, um, I was looking for a deep impact. And of course, that did not happen. Well, we really, because I was saying a deep impact, we, we missed the fact that there was two big deals that were predicted in that table before it happened. It was totally overlooked, one being the collision, which was proven uh, here recently uh, with the data that came in, that the comas actually did collide. It, it touched the surface of Mars. The other thing was the plasma discharge. Now, uh, I had done an interview with Paul Hansen, who was in Australia at Siding Spring Observatory at the time. We were, we were broadcasting live. And there was a debate going on with the scientists there about the electric universe. And so they did not believe that there was going to be uh, a deep impact. But they did believe that there would be a plasma discharge. And they were looking for this. And they had asked Paul to see if I would see if plasma discharge was in the table. And it did, indeed it was. And that was the first time I'd heard about plasma discharge. Um, I didn't think it was a big deal. Uh, and it just so happens the next day when the data was come in uh, with some ground-based astronomy going on, there was a scientist or an astronomer who had captured footage of the actual plasma discharge. It happened. <clears throat> and we totally overlooked that uh, it was in the table before it happened. Also, the collision. Uh, it was overshadowed with my mistake of being you know, interpreting it as a deep impact. Here's the thing. The, the data that they collected after that, you know, when they were able to look at the surface of Mars, they realized there was a plasma discharge. It left a huge um, spot on Mars. And uh, here we are. I stumble across all of this electric universe stuff. And it you know, this uh, this guy here, this geologist who's passed away, Michael Steinbrocker, we're at his, his um, website here, where they had this, or blog, excuse me, where they've done this uh, post of this um, conference they had uh, in Arizona. Um, and they also had one, I think, in, well, no, this was posted in February. It happened in, in June. Um, about the geology of the area and the possibility and this gentleman had a theory or was trying to prove that there was a plasma discharge in the north or, or southwest uh, the two videos that I'm gonna post down here one is on comets and the uh, the electric comet and the other is on the lightning scarred planet now I would recommend that you would watch these or, or familiarize or even just, you know just side note it because when I do the interview with Gil you're going to want to know what we're talking about and why we're talking about plasma discharge and why we're talking about displacement of material and you know um, things like Lichtenberg and uh, what's the other term dendritic dendritic uh, that's my 
trusted research partner with me at 1.12 a.m. Mountain Time, uh, right here with me, uh, dependable. So I'll be talking to Gil tomorrow, and we'll be talking about all these terms, and so these videos will get you up to par on uh, what we're talking about, because I believe it's very uh, important. I believe you were showing me something that I didn't see last year of what is to come. Now, what if a planetary body comes through? And there is a planetary, uh, and there's a plasma discharge. What does that mean? What does it do? Uh, how will we be, be affected? Um, I'm hoping to show you folks correlation and, and interpretation of Bible prophecy in some of these books like Isaiah 20, uh, 24 and others, you know, like in Joel when it talks about the day of Yahuwah and what happens. It's a day of darkness. And, you know, there are many and dozens and dozens of these end time apocalyptic prophecies. I believe it is explained by manifestations that things to come, particularly from uh, outer space. Uh, it's upon us. Um, a lot of lessons learned since last year. And uh, I believe you always restore my confidence in um, how I see the codes and how I interpret what he's showing me. Um, this is very important. We've come a long way with this uh, channel. And I think he's going to reveal some very interesting things to us in the coming weeks and months. Folks. So be, uh, be praying for this, this channel. Some serious things. This doubt was some of the data that was stolen from me in Dallas, when my computers were hacked. Some of the data, and I didn't understand why, was the NASA and Comet Sighting Spring data. Why was that? Why was those files taken? I could not figure that out because the other stuff had to do with my divorce. Uh, I think I understand now. It's because what we miss, this electric universe thing, I believe the elites know what is going to come and what is going to happen and what it does. I mean, this... We're talking about mountains that melt like wax. How does it happen? I'm going to show you how it happens. It happens in seconds. You want to know how the Grand Canyon was carved? It wasn't carved in millions of years. It was carved in seconds, folks, with a plasma discharge. Hold that thought. I know it sounds crazy. Give me an opportunity to show you the proof behind that. So be stay in tune for the interview with Neil Broussard and the electric universe. So shalom, and I will see you after that interview.